Okay, so drawing hyperbolas is quite easy. Okay, I can imagine any hyperbola, let's say we have fx is equal to 2 over x plus 3 minus 1. I have to go and draw that. So, I'll just draw a set. Whoa, that's skewed. That's not better. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it looks a bit better. There's my asymptote. So the one way I can look at do it is actually just look at the original one and then kind of move it. Um, the other the other way that's a little bit more foolproof, um, although this is no problem, is just to find the asymptotes first. Now the asymptotes is I know or the asymptotes are I know that x may not equal negative three because if x is equal to negative 3, this is going to be 0. So at negative 3, let's say that's 1, 2, 3, at negative 3, we have a vertical asymptote. So down here, my graph must never reach that line. Um, the next thing, the other asymptote is, I know that this fraction can never be 0. So I will never have this fraction 0 minus 1. So the y value that I can never ever have is the y value negative 1. So there's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that y value at negative 1 I can never have. And this now kind of forms my new axis, set of axis, okay? And I know the original shape used to go like this, but instead of going between these two axes, I'm going to make it between those two axes. So this one is going to look something like this. I'm not sure if it's actually going through zero there. We'll check just now. Okay, maybe I'm a bit wrong. Okay, it would look something like this. How do I know it's this shape and not the other shape that looks like this? Again, remember this one is when my numerator there is negative and this one that I have here is when my numerator is positive so I have a positive numerator that's why I'm going through the positive x positive y negative x negative y so um, let's go and find the, as the, the intercepts in other words where does my x um, where do I intercept with the axis so first of all um, for the x axis I uh, for the x intercept you might recall or you should recall that we always make y zero okay it's as simple as that so when I make this equal to zero I get zero is equal to 2 over x plus 3 minus 1 and now to solve this I take the negative 1 and I add it on both sides a 1 to get rid of this portion so I get 1 is equal to 2 over x plus 3 so when will this fraction be equal to 1 it's when the denominator is also equal to 2 isn't it in other words when x plus 3 is equal to 2 I know that this thing will be 1 all I did was actually to multiply both sides with an x plus 3 and multiply this side with an x plus 3 and on this side it cancelled and now I just get that x plus 3 times 1 which is just x plus 3 is equal to 2 and that means that x must be equal to negative 1 so where do I intersect my x-axis so I drew this wrong definitely so this thing is supposed to be passing through that point okay so we'll fix it just now how about my y-intercept? For my y-intercept, I make x equal to 0. So y-intercept, we make x 0. So that gives me y is equal to 2 over 0, com, oh, 0 plus 3 minus 1. So this is just 2 over 3, which um, 2 thirds minus 1 gives me negative a third. Negative a third. So that's where I'm going to intersect there at negative a third. 
and I apologize for my initial wrong sketch but you can see it was quite a good estimate at least it's supposed to be going through those two points like that that's the correct answer like that okay it's not too pretty but I think you get the picture that it's not that difficult okay uh, just name our axes okay so that's how you do it um, let's look at the other way let's say they give me a function and they're asking me for the function formula so they give me a function and say here's the function okay something like this they said that point that's now the two asymptotes this is sorry this is the function you can obviously see this thing is going to have a negative a value that top value there is going to be negative and they tell me that this point's coordinates is 2 for x and 1 for y that's the point where the asymptotes meet okay and they ask me, they tell me this is f of x and I must find f of x. Now what you should know, and please do remember this, is that for a hyperbola, the general form, the big general form is a is x over x minus p plus q. Okay, so p is obviously how much is moved left or right, q is how much is moved up or down, or you can just see p is the vertical asymptote, I'm going to shorthand write it there, and Q is the horizontal asymptote. It's as easy as that. Okay, so what is the vertical asymptote? This is X is equal to 2. Okay, and that one is Y is equal to 1. Cool. Which means in my function formula, I can immediately go substitute everything I know so far I know that x is not allowed to be 2, which means it's x minus 2. Now, all I did was to substitute the p there. And q can never be 1, which means this fraction can never be 0. So I can never just have q. q, uh, sorry, y can never be 1. So q is equal to 1. Okay, and now finally, I need to find a. Now, it is impossible to find A if they don't give you more information. They've only given us two pieces of information, the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. They have to give us something else, and usually what they will give you, and I can't promise this, but usually they give you an, um, at least another point, but they often give you the y-intercept. So what that y-intercept, let's say it's 4. The y-intercept is 4, which means y is 4, this is y is 4 when x is 0. So if all I do now is substitute and solve, okay, plus 1. And here you go ahead and we simply solve this. Okay, so this is 4 is equal to a over negative 2 plus 1. If I solve this, I see, okay, uh, and subtract the 1 on both sides, subtract it, so I get 3 is equal to a over negative 2. Multiply with a negative 2 both sides, which gives me negative 6 is equal to a. And there we go. We, from the beginning, said a must be negative, and that's exactly what we, f what, what we found. So finally, what is f of x's formula? Okay, f of x is going to be f of x is now equal to negative 6 over x minus 2 plus 1. That's it.